Okay, so welcome everybody. And for those of you who just joined, if you would, I'm going to paste in the link to the Etherpad and ask you to go sign in over there. And that's where our agenda is. So uh, I'll start with a welcome. And it's so good to see so many of you. We've got 23 people here today or, or thereabouts. Um, so let's go ahead and move on into the project updates and announcements. And um, I'm guessing Neil probably has a few. Is that true? Yeah, uh, I do. Um, so, uh, whoops, got all this typing going on here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll hold off there on the Etherpad. Um, right, so 10.7, we're ready to release. If you want to test it, it's on nightly. We have an RCO3 up there, um, but I believe we've resolved all the blockers, so we just have to have the, you know, resources who, you know, like uh, – uh, Matt Jones usually packages things up, so hopefully he'll have some time to do that this week. I think he will. He indicated he would, and then I'm working on the documentation. So if we can get those pieces done, we should be able to get it out this week. If for some reason we get delayed, we can let people know. But 10.7, you know, has a significant number of blocker fixes in it and a couple security issues. So, um, so it's something that people who are staying on 10, not moving to 11, might want to consider, uh, you know, upgrading to. Um, I can give you the more specifics in terms of number of blockers. Uh, let me take a look quickly. Doesn't take long. Um, let's see. I ten seven. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten blocker priority bugs fixed in Sakai ten seven compared to ten six. So. That's pretty significant. And we also have some translation updates in Turkish and Chinese. So that's should be coming, like I said, this week or very, very shortly. If you need, if you really have a pressure to get it, let me know. We'll make, try and make sure, but that's, uh, that's where we are with that. And then I, I sent out an, uh, an email that's too long to read uh, for Sakai 11 QA um, for 11.0 RCO1, but we're, we're still try we're still planning on uh you know finishing up this Friday with our, our this round of QA testing and um we'll need a lot of we'll need a lot of QA on things that have been fixed and need verification so they can get merged into eleven. So and we have a couple of tools that we can uh need testing. So if you're available for QA, you are welcome to to join us and we can kind of let you know the areas of need and see where you can help out. Um, my hope is even if we don't quite make these dates, I hope we make the dates, but even if we don't quite make them, what I'm really hoping we'll shake out of this is we'll have specifics, you know, we'll kind of know, okay, this is, these are some areas we need to, you know, have more attention on testing or, you know, we have, we've discovered these number of blocker bugs, whatever it is, so we can really get to an RCO one as soon as possible. Um, I would like to see us get to, you know, an RCO one Preferably even an RCO2 maybe or RCO3 before the conference. I mean, even if we just got to an RCO1 before the Perio conference, I think that would be a pretty big achievement. So uh, thank you, everyone, who has been testing. We've had a tremendous amount. Um, but, of course, you know, 11 is one of the biggest releases in Sakai in a long time, and that poses some some challenges. And I guess a couple things to mention is certainly like Morpheus um, responsive design. It's really, really even hard to assess because it affects everything. It's really the Morpheus team is having a hard, you know, it's challenging for them to even figure out like what the blocker bugs are and trying to figure that out. But make sure you post any issues into um, into Jira directly. And the other the other thing that will be coming is a discussion about whether dashboard. We've had a lot of discussion about whether we're going to have enough community attention on bug fixes to get the dashboard, and even though we really want to, so that 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 will be a discussion that's happening over the next few weeks. And um, the other thing I think I'll mention is maybe it would make sense for uh, to pub for me to publish like how we're we're using several different labels, um, you know, in that we're starting like. Uh, and so maybe I can put them in the in the Etherpad here. But um, I've just started using some labels to help out. Um, so labels. Uh, so there's one label called 11 blocker, and that label just means that I. And you're welcome to use these labels too. It means I'm just curious whether this needs additional peer revise. So it's an issue that might be open. Um, by default, issues are opened in major priority, and um, 
you know, we want to we want to highlight issues that really should be blockers or critical priority, and we want to improve improve those. So ones where I I was pretty sure it was blocker, I just make it a blocker, or I think it's a critical, I just make it a critical. But ones I'm not sure about, and I just think it's a good idea to have other eyes on them, I have been using the 11 blocker label. And there's a needs testing label, and the needs testing label is one where somebody's reported an issue, but let's say people are having trouble reproducing it, it might be good to have another pair of eyes, you know, QA eyes, go in and, and see if you can reproduce it, right? Um, then there's one uh, QA ready. These are ones um, in the queue, in the verification queue, because you know that once they're fixed, we want people to test them, and then we and once they ver once you verify them, then the mer the branch manager says, oh, okay, that one's been fixed, and somebody tested and made sure it works. So let me merge it into the 11 branch and so I've been put starting to use the label QA ready for one for issues uh, in that queue that look to me like they have um, uh, you know test plans or they're fairly obvious how you should test them I haven't finished putting that label on um, but I'm working on that people are well you know willing to use, you know if you want to use the labels in the same way I do that would be totally cool and then I have another one called QA test plan, and I'm putting this one on issues where it looks to me like we need a test plan. Like I don't know how people would know how to verify the issue. So those are some of the labels I'm using. And again, others are welcome to use the same label, and maybe I need to make a little legend so you understand kind of how to use that label. And if you want to go in and you know search on any of these labels and help out kind of resolving these issues, like put a second pair of eyes on the 11 blocker issues, or you know, retest an issue that has a needs testing label, et cetera. Uh, the query for the, the JQL, what's called JQL, which is Jira query language, is really simple. You just would do this: labels equal, let's say, needs testing. That's it. And then uh, Jira will show you all the, and that's in the advanced, the advanced search part of Jira, and it will show you all the, all the uh, um, Jiras that that have that label on it. So. Um, that's the main things going on. I mean, a ton of testing. The community has done, an, I mean, the amount of work that's gone to this release is truly phenomenal, uh, both, you know, of course, contributions and new features and, like, uh, you know, the STU, S2U group, which is the Spanish-speaking institutions leading the way on um, fixing uh, responsive design issues. We sure, certainly can use help there as well, additional development help there. There has been some other contributions from other developers with that, which is really nice. Um, you know, the QA testing has been incredible, the amount of testing and people taking ownership of tools and going through them. So there's been a ton of work. It's just a very, very big release and a little daunting. <laughs> We're trying to break it down into these manageable chunks so we can we can get, um, you know, 11.0 11 out. So I hope that was a helpful summary. I was doing it sort of extemporaneous in my head as things kind of popped up. Are there any any questions? Or anyone want to add on to that or clarify anything? Sorry, I thought I had unmuted, but I hadn't. I was just saying that's good that you could um, remember all that stuff off the top of your head. I did paste in a link to the Confluence page that shows the Sakai 11 JIRAs. Um, and so for those of you who are willing to help test a lot of these, that issues that have been fixed, that's a good page to go to to find the um, uh, links to the JIRAs that need testing. Uh, yeah, as well, I, yeah, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I was going to just add to that. Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, and if you, you know, like I said, I haven't finished using those labels to, to help you find issues that, that, you know, you can test. If you do, like, want to help and jump in and try and look at an issue and you don't know how to test it, just skip it and mm -hmm. you know go on to a different issue or if you want put uh you know ping me or, or ping, ping me on, or ping the qa group on um slack or something and say hey i'm not sure how to test this one and you know that'll that'll get extra attention on that so don't be intimidated because i would say there's a, a large proportion of issues i'd say like one third to half of the issues um it may not be really clear to test you know how you would test them so don't don't feel bad um just just uh you know Find one you, that makes sense to you and knock it out. Sorry good, to interrupt, ad, good advice. No, no, you're you're good. Um, so I also see, I'm not sure who 
put this in, might have been Louisa, perhaps, uh, that the Atlas winners have been announced? Uh, yes, this is Louisa. Thank you, Trish. Um, so we selected winners uh, last week, and this week, um, actually today, uh, Imperion uh, pushed the announcement out. Um, actually, if you go to Twitter, you can see them. Uh, we want to push and uh, uh, encourage everyone to uh, broadcast the news. Uh, if you haven't know, uh, the fir uh, the winners, uh, one of them is uh, from UK Brist uh, University of Bristol uh, about a dirty project. So uh, what I heard from Ian is that that was made a great impact uh, in the Zerti conference and uh, in Europe. So spreading the word to uh, the European users about Sakai, learning analytics, and about Aperio. So that was really good. Um, so at the moment, we're planning to have uh, sessions for all the uh, winners and the honorable mentions. I think some of you are here today. Uh, if I could read very quickly, it was uh, University of uh, Bristol. Um, uh, sorry, what's that one? Um, uh, University of Cape Town, uh, Hawaii, uh, Duke, um, and also uh, Valencia. Yeah, so um, Valencia also used the OpenCast. So that was a great expansion. Uh, to other apparel tools uh, besides the regular Sakai RMS and the OE. Yeah, so really good. Um, so I hope to arrange all the sessions uh, in the coming uh, couple of days. The early bird registration is come, uh, ending on Friday, I think. So uh, hopefully everything wrap up very quickly and I'm looking forward to the sessions and I hope to see you all there uh, in all those sessions. Thank you. That's it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks, Louisa. That's really exciting about the Atlas winners. Um, I tried Indeed. to capture a little bit in the notes. I'm not sure I got everything right, but um, you can correct anything I got wrong. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and Neil has a great idea to start spreading the news about the Atlas winners. <laughs> uh, we do plan to make videos. I'm not sure if it's a music video, <laughs> um, but that's a great idea. We should do something. You know, we have a winner from Hawaii. Um, you know, um, I, I'm thinking maybe uh, last year when he came, he had all the Hawaiian shirts and uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the all kinds of decorations, accessories. So I guess we can do something. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think doing something yeah. a little different sometimes gets attention, you know, a little bit more playful, you yeah. know, could, could be something that goes a little more viral in the community, you know? Yeah, yeah so totally. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Neil. You always have great ideas. Yeah, definitely. So I did not come up with a JIRA of the week, um, mostly because I've been so focused with many of the rest of you working on Sakai 11 testing and so forth. Okay. I was hoping somebody else would come through. Thank you, Neil. Go right ahead. Sure. Well, actually, it's from the developers. So I had a request from the developers. Um, so I'll paste in the, uh, I sent this out this morning, but I'm doubtful people had a chance to see it or um, look at it. Um, it was in response to this. Uh, oh, here. Okay. So it's uh, Samago 2735, and um, I will also paste in, the, there's conversation on, um, here, I'll paste in the, don't worry, I'll paste in the uh, issue here. Boom. Whoops, there we go. And... Um, also, there's discussion on the actual what's called a pull request, and what a pull request is, it's the when you're a developer, you send this over to GitHub and say, please take my uh, code contribution, and there was discussion on that that I think is relevant, and um, I read through it. I don't think it's too overly technical for the group to weigh in on, um, 
and uh, we had a request, like I said, from Sam and um, from Sam Odenhoff and, and the developer on there to, to review it. So it's an event log showing events for removed assessments and the more detailed, the really relevant discussion is on that pull request. So what I recommend folks do is click on that pull 2216 link. And um, and so if you read down there, I'll, we need to maybe give people a couple minutes to read, but essentially it sounds like what's happening is maybe that in this request they're saying that if you're an instructor and you remove an assessment, should it be removed out of the log file? Um, so that's the question. Uh, so Dave asked, is there harm in, in leaving it in? And if you read the notes on the um, pull request, I'm not sure who Ramon is. I'm sure I know his, uh, you know, I don't know what his real name. Let me see if I can see his real name. No, I'm not sure his real name, so I'm not sure. But anyway, he was saying that um, he thinks that his use case was that he's thinking you as an instructor um, you know, remove an assessment and then re and then resend it, and then it would be confusing because uh, you would see the data from the removed assessment with the same name as the one that's active, and that somehow that might confuse you. I think that's kind of what he's saying, uh, but you can read read the the comments and see if that's what you come up with. Let's see, I see some comments in here. Um, so Molly wrote, if the removed, if the removed test had removed or an equivalent message that added the information is still available, there's no confusion with current assessments. Uh, can the deleted non-present assessments title be marked as deleted? Uh, I think you can reuse a title maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, someone in the pull request suggested showing the deleted assessment is crossed out. I'm not sure how you do that in a log, maybe that's through a user interface. Wilma wrote, could deleted assessments be flagged as deleted so the instructor knows they've been removed, but all of the log entries remain? Um, yeah, I think that that's, uh, I'm not sure how you would indicate that in the log files. I think that's the key thing, is how do you indicate that in the logs or not indicate that in the logs? And let's see, and Dave wrote, and that could be confusing on what's most current or accurate. Yeah, I think that's the concern uh, for removing it, but then there's a concern about removing stuff that's in the log, right? Um, Right, and there's also that there could be more than one deleted version of the assessment, and that could be even more confusing. That's what Adam wrote. Um, and Wilma was thinking an asterisk or the word deleted at the end, similar to what others suggested. Uh, you can reuse a title if there are no published assessments with the title. Thanks, Molly. So those are great comments. Uh, deleted, but include date. I think there are dates in the log file. I'm not that super familiar with it, but I, I normally log files have dates, so. I'm not sure if I'm understanding that comment, well, Molly. If you remove the log entry, will there be a loss of student data? I think that's the concern, is that it's like a loss of data because this actually happened and now you're removing it and so it didn't happen. Um, not really 100% sure. There confusion between multiple deleted assessments with the same name. Yes, Molly, that's exactly one of the concerns is the confusion between multiple deleted assessments with the same name or using the same name to one that's active now that was deleted. That's, I think, the source of concern. Um, Karen writes, the date of a student submission would give a clue. Yes, I think that's correct, Karen, that the date of the student submission would give a clue which version the submission was for. So, Again, not, a, not an area that I'm used to using a lot, so uh, isn't the student data tied to user ID? I presume so, Terry. A lot of comments coming in. Let's see, adding the deletion date to the remove message would help clarify the version, okay? Uh, we, we often have to respond to faculty who say students tried to submit an exam but it didn't work, so this would be tough to trace back if the log entry was removed. 
Oh, like tried to submit one that uh, an exam on one that then got deleted, Linda. Okay, so that's a really good use case. Pretty strong uh, argument for keeping the log. So it seems like a more logical thing is to find some way of indicating the remove that that um, exam was uh, removed rather than removing the log entry. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Dave. Uh, so Karen agrees with Linda, removing log entry seems like a bad idea, yeah. What if a student took the test before it was deleted but then reports they took it? Right, that's, that's I think, Wilma, what somebody else was saying there too. So it seems like everyone, the cons it sounds like the consensus is that it's a bad idea to remove the log entry but that there might be a good way to indicate that the assessment is, has been removed and what I would ask if people are willing is to maybe put some of those ideas directly on the JIRA ticket. Um, that would be really, really, I think, helpful to generate some of the discussion and, and converge on, a, on an idea. So um, if one or more people would be willing to do that, if you have an idea, that would be, uh, I think, really the best, the best way. Because I think there's a way of coming to a solution this where we don't remove the log entries, but somehow there is an indication to make it easier for um, instructors who are going back and looking at that information, right? I, if that's my understanding, people right. And I admit it's an area I'm not super familiar with, so I'm having a uh, hard time connecting the exact ideas with are they feasible to be, you know, implemented? But um, I think they seem like pretty good ideas. So are one or two people willing to volunteer and, and just put a comment on the JIRA? I think you know if, if there are different if there's two or three ideas, I think it's fine for two or three people to put comments on. That's what that's what comments are for. Thank you, Dave. Great, and I encourage others as well. So take a look at what Dave writes, and if you agree with him, you know you can you can actually put a comment in that you agree with Dave. Thank you, Molly. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, guys. Great. The developers, I'm sure, really appre will appreciate it. Thanks for bringing this up with us, Neil. Sure. This was actually one of the first times that the, the developers actually asked asked me <laughs> to do it for some wow. just bring it up. Yeah. It's like, hey Neil, would you take that to the teaching and learning group? So wow. I think that's awesome. that says some I said I think that says something about the feedback that you all have given to the developers in the past. I think they're coming to really appreciate that they're helpful. So that's, uh, kudos to you guys. Yeah, that's great. And to you for helping to, you know, facilitate those connections. Sure, my pleasure. It's really great. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to our um, discussion on lessons in Sakai 11. Luisa, I've gone ahead and given you presenter uh, privileges in Big Blue Button. I mean, yeah, Big Blue Button. And uh, so you can go ahead and share your screen and, and lead us through that discussion if you would. But you're still muted, so just in case you're talking, Louisa. Okay, so I'm just unmuted myself. Uh, I'm uploading a uh, PowerPoint here, uh, just a second. So I try to uh, organize all the new features in the latest uh, lessons and try to think how we uh, promote a new lessons tool and maybe uh, we will uh, uh, make a consensus on the language and also some of the terms that we're going to use to describe uh, this tool. So it can be sometimes um, very confusing when you uh, communicate, you know, you click here, you click there, you know, what do you exactly mean? Um, from our past discussion, I noticed that, so I'm putting together a PowerPoint, uh, and made, made some screenshots, so let's see if that works. Uh, okay, so just a second. Okay, so you guys see that? Yep. Okay, very good. Uh, now, uh, so here is a brief write-up that I uh, working on. It's a totally a draft, so not um, ready at all. 
Okay, so any comments would be a help. Uh, Neil provided some uh, initial thoughts. So these are looking a little bit too vague, uh, very um, nice looking words. For example, uh, encourage innovative content creation and delivery. What does that actually mean? So uh, it's not very specific. So I'm hoping to get some feedback and uh, possibly some language to make it more specific. And there are some terminologies I'm uh, sometimes uh, struggle with. Uh, for example, we have the two new uh, functions, the section break and the calling break. And then what you actually create on the page, I call it a block design that because that's what we uh, used way back like a year ago when we had a wireframe design. Uh, I call it a block design, uh, but not everybody used that terminology and not everybody understand what the block design is. So there might be better way to describe it. So here are some uh, screenshots. Now, for example, uh, the interface makeover. Um, so if you want to introduce the new lessons, you can see that the menu bars are a lot different from before. If you click and these are grouped in three categories and it's easier to find things, right? And also we have print view and the index of pages, they're grouped to the right so you can see them. Um, previously, pre print view is not easy to find. And also the landing page uh, is much more cleaner. Um, the instruction is much more concise than before. It won't drive people crazy when they see that information there. So I like this a lot. Um, then when you actually go down to the uh, pages, uh, this is the screenshot I used from last uh, meetings. So uh, bear with me here. This title is um, cramping a little bit. Now, uh, this is what I meant by multiple ways to add new content. So you have this plus buttons all over the pages. And the two on the top you can use to uh, add above the items. Uh, the one below is to add below these items. And we also have the merge button, the column setting buttons, uh, a lot of different things. Okay, so this is what I meant by a blog design. Um, so at the moment, I don't have a better term to describe it. So I just have a very generic term, flexible page layout design. Um, so Neil asked me to be more specific. For example, how, how many columns can we add? How many sections can we add? Well, technically you can add unlimited number of sections and columns. Obviously that's not the best practice. Uh, so for example, I usually would recommend two or three columns, right? But vertically, so if you want, you can go as long as you want, as many sections as you want. Uh, I tend to call it blocks because each area will be the block and these will be vertically one section. And then you have uh, this one block with two columns. Uh, it's a one block because it's inside one border. So uh, two columns, one section, one block. So uh, this is uh, one section, but two blocks, two columns. Um, so, so, so kind of, um, um, I, I'm used to this term block design, but I don't know how the community uh, respond to that. How is that a term to use in our news release or in our other marketing materials? Um, I don't know. Okay, so have some uh, feedback here. So, um, Louisa, you're saying block, right? Yeah. Not yeah. block. Okay. Block, like right. a building blocks. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh. Yeah. I think there was some confusion about that. Uh -huh. um, and honestly, I do not have a good suggestion. I don't know if anybody else uh, has any suggestions. 
Mm-hmm. Not, uh, Linda, Linda likes Black like Line. Okay. I just, just want to, this Terry go lightly, I just, just want to reiterate, reiterate that good design, design guidelines still, still apply here. here. Just, because just because you can, you can add, add a lot, lot of things, things for the, for student, the student to look, to look at, at, doesn't mean, doesn't you, mean you should. Yeah. So we've got, got some questions, questions going on. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, let's see. Um, let me back up a little bit. And we are getting some echo, and I think it's coming to your microphone, Louise. So I wonder if you could. It is mine? Okay. Okay. So. okay. Yeah, I think that that's better. Um, so we have a question. What happens to wide blocks on a narrow screen? And I think that speaks to what Dave was asking in an earlier post um, as well. Let's see if I can find it. The the responsive design has still has limitations, etc. Have you have you guys um, that much tested? Um, I tested the responsive design in lessons. Uh, so if I go back to my point at the beginning here you can see that I list uh, make a uh, one item here uh, so improve the interface to facilitate the mobile device viewing of lessons pages that directly uh, related to a question earlier what if you have a wide block on a narrow screen so for example on the mobile devices the mobile device uh, the the lessons will automatically adjust the width of the block um, or columns uh, based on the um, screen sizes uh, of the viewing device. It's the part of the Morpheus responsive design. So it will shrink. Uh, it definitely improved what we had before. Uh, so in, in Sakai 2.9 and 10, uh, it's not so easy to adjust the width and of those uh, blocks. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So however, if you continue to use tables, you know, because we didn't have the block design before, um, users are used to using tables to create columns. If you continue to use tables, uh, you cannot take full advantage of the responsive design. So that's uh, uh, my two cents on that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Feed. That's good to understand too. So that when we're re, you know, updating folks on on the new features, that that is a design um, caveat to make them aware of. So if you guys want to try out, I created a site on the QA01. Uh, let me see if I can log in here. Okay, QA01. Oh, sorry. It's a wrong. So while you're doing that, uh -huh. some of the chat, Jay says some institutions will ret retain single column use. Others will want to employ additional columns for other uses. The employment of columns allows for variability and diversity, especially as we head toward making content more accessible and responsive. Absolutely. And Fawe adds that using tables is not a good practice in terms of accessibility. That's absolutely true. And I wouldn't expect that columns is a one-to-one -one replacement for tables. Yeah, not necessarily. That is true, Dave. <laughs> and Terry is, is adding, sometimes it you just need a table. Um, and Becky adds that tables are supposed to be used for data, not layout. And absolutely, that is true. But making the, even so, data tables should be, um, written the content should be accessible so there are tricks for that thank you guys for your good comments oh um there's a question about the blocks uh, are they divs okay. 
uh, this is Louisa, I'm back. So the blocks are not divs. The, they are just the regular sections. You don't need to know any HTML to do that. Okay, let me see if I can share my screen. Um, my computer is really slow at the moment. Uh, does it show up on your end? Do you see my screen? Not yet. We still just see the slides. At least that's all I see. All right, so I think the Java is running really slow. You could just put the URL in the chat for us. Okay. Uh, so I think you can all log in into the uh, QA01. Is that the Maris server? Yeah, the QA server actually. Yeah, the Maris yeah. QA server. If you log into there, uh, you can use uh, the. Dave just um, put a um, username, a faculty, and a password as the tie. Yeah, so cool. I also put a lot of uh, student ID in there so you can go in there and see. Let me confirm the login. I think the password is Sakai for every all of those. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, 10 ID in there, student 01 to student 10. So all the passwords are Sakai. So if you log in, you can see this site. The name of the site is uh, discussion one SMPL 101. So if you go to the site, you can see uh, what the page looks like. You can uh, even uh, try that out on your mobile devices and see if that works out for you. Uh, you can see that the mobile, uh, uh, on the mobile devices, how the block works. You know, it, it will shrink and pile up like a building blocks on your mobile uh, device screen. Um, so I want to post this question to also to the community. Uh, if you have used this, this block design, you know, try out a little bit, uh, you know, make some pages and uh, see wh what what uh, kind of uh, advice you, you would have. Uh, you know, any questions you have, any design issues you think the users might encounter, you know, anything. Uh, I will be reading the uh, chat here. So, um, Louisa, yeah. Wilma has a question about exporting lessons mm -hmm. as common car cartridge yeah. objects and wondering what the export would look like for pages with blocks. Do you have any idea? Um, I tried it very briefly. So you just click on the export button and then it's a zip file. Right. So then uh, you um, <clears throat> use that package and go to the other side. You can import. Um, so there's another way to export the lessons and the import, uh, which is in the side info, the regular. Uh, I don't know what the other uh, institutions I use. Uh, we use the the one called import from site. So if you use import from site, uh, you choose an old site with lessons and then um, pick the lessons and the resources tool together. If you link to two assignments, link to tests and quizzes, um, link to the forums, you also import those tools together. So uh, lessons, resources, tests and quizzes, assignments, forums together, and then import. So in the new site, Everything looks exactly like the old one. Gotcha. Yeah. So Wilma asks a clear, clarifying question. What does the imported file look like with the common cartridge specifically? Does it convert to HTML? Um, I don't think it's HTML. It, it is, um, I haven't a look at it. I think it's a zip file with a lot of things in there. I don't exactly read those uh, okay. uh, technical things. Yeah, Maybe sorry. XML. 
Possibly. Yeah, maybe we, uh, uh, one of us can test it out. Um, yeah. I don't think it convert to HTML. It, it just the regular lessons pages. Yeah. Um, so Fawi had a very good question. Also, maybe Dave uh, about the custom CSS. Uh, we don't use custom CSS files at Marist, so I have no way to test it out. Uh, if you go to the test script, we have that leave the blank. Uh, so if if one of you who has the custom CSS file, if you could test it out, that'd be uh, wonderful. Um, I don't know how the custom CSS would work in this new one. Um, uh, I imagine you used the one block design previously in the old lessons. Uh, I don't know if you have to adjust your custom CSS uh, using this new block design. We've been told that the CSS doesn't work in uh, Sakai 11. I don't know whether um, else. Who told you that? I uh, don't one, know. Of our, one of our users. Uh, who's been oh, you, you, okay. Have you tested that yet in, in, in the QA server? That's where they tested it, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. I just wondered if anybody else had had a look. Uh, Becky has a great point there. Uh, so when you resize the image, uh, resize the browser, the image is fixed and overlaps the other item. Yes, it is. Because the picture itself uh, is not a responsive. Uh, you mm -hmm. have to hard code it. Uh, yes, that's indeed a, a problem. So you have to be very careful when you use pictures. And, you know, uh, I'm not sure if the style sheet that um, is used by default employs this option to resize the images, but there is a way to do that. Um, and. Uh, we can do we can some do testing some and share that if it, if it seems to work in less. I know there's a way to do it when using the strap wall sheet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm thinking, uh, Trish, because the uh, sharing the screen doesn't work on my computer somehow today, maybe because my computer is slow, do you think you can share the screen a lot, uh, if you log into uh, the QA server? Sure. So I'm going to have to take presenter away from me to do that. Is oh, that definitely. Okay? No problem. No problem. So when you log in, you can use the instructor 01. That's the instructor in the sample site I uh, put in. Uh, let me put the uh, username password, instructor 01. Okay, I should be sharing my desktop. Mm -hmm. Let me log in for a while. Yeah. And is it discussion simple to Uh, yes, it's a uh, discussion one SMPL one oh one. 101, okay. And game lessons tool? Yep. All right, what do you want me to do? Um, okay, so I don't see your screen. Does anybody oh. see Trisha's screen? Let's see. No? Okay. Well, I don't see it either. Uh, you see my screen? Okay, hold on. Let's try again. I, I don't have. Um... It says I'm now on a desktop, but apparently not.
you see the PowerPoint, right? Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm what? sorry, Louisa. We are having technical difficulties. I, I don't think yeah, we're able to yeah. Okay. override the PowerPoint right now. Mm, it's okay. Um, yeah, you, so you, if you guys want to talk, uh, you can speak. Um, so the question earlier was uh, Neil was saying creating a JIRA. Um, and you guys want to do some testing. So I might have missed some messages. So David, you want to talk about what you guys have been, uh, you, you want to do? Uh, Dave, uh, New, or maybe Farway, you want to talk about what you plan to do? I'm not exactly sure I understand the question. So you guys been uh, texting in the chat about uh, you're going to do some testing. So I didn't see what exactly you guys are going to test on. Um, I, I think what Fallway and I were trying to do was I was trying to show Fallway. Um, we implemented a CSS and I pulled that CSS from our Sakai 10 instance over to our over to the Sakai QA Marist. And it seemed like it functioned rather well. I didn't have to make any adjustments to it and Fallway was curious to know how we did that. Um. Yeah, yeah, I miss Harvey here. here. I'm just, I'm just added add Dave to uh, one of the sites uh, on the Marist query server. And uh, I don't know why I tested our customized CSS. It didn't, uh, it didn't seem to work. <laughs> That's why I just wonder if Dave can go there, have a look to check. Uh, is what's, what's the problem? Is the CSS problem or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Dave, could you show us very quickly? Is a uh, is it possible that you share the screen with us? I I'm, I haven't seen a custom CSS sheet before. I mean, what it looks like, not a code. Right. Is it possible that you show us very quickly? Yeah. Um. So let me. Uh, what I'll do is I'll go. I'm going to go to the the Maris site. Um. And I'm just going to go to. Let's see here. Um, and Dave, I've just given you presenter right, so m maybe you'll have better luck than I did. <laughs> okay. What I'll try and do is I'll try and share out um, just simply a, a screenshot so that everybody can kind of see what it looks like so you don't have to go to the website. Um, and I don't know if that'll actually end up being a little bit more beneficial for folks. Um, I'll just throw that out there. Actually, somebody's been messing around on the page, so that's great. Uh, fantastic. So I'll throw this out here. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to throw a link into um, just going to throw a link into the chat window, and everybody can kind of go look at that. Um, but then this will give you an idea of sort of what some of the CSS is doing. Um, uh, right. You're not going to see everything that the CSS is doing, but you'll see at least a couple of uh, sort of sort of how it looks. Um, but you can mess around with the CSS to some degree, um, and it's been fun sort of messing around with it. Um, here's the link. Uh, you guys can go look at. It's just a PNG file, so you can look at that. Um, and then if you want, do you, do you want to actually see what the CSS looks like itself or, or does that matter? So the image you're going to see there, is, hopefully the image you guys end up seeing then essentially there, you, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on. But what you do see is, for example, some of the things that the CSS is doing is it's rounding those Im those the the image uh, corners. Um, it's also uh, putting that border around uh, that image. Um, there's also um, that uh, sort of gray space that's around the learning unit description and learning unit objectives. That's actually being accomplished by the CSS and not natively by those settings that are inside the lessons area now. Um, I don't know if you can't actually see it in the screenshot, but further below, there's other areas that are sort of somewhat controlled by the CSS. We're not doing a whole lot with the CSS, but we're doing some things. Can I just check, Dave, that you're saying the CSS does work on lessons on Yeah. I mean, I like, yes, Fallway. I mean, I was able to pull ours in, and uh, it worked. Um, so. Good, good. Thanks. I'm going to try and look at the hallway if I, if I get into it. I know you sent the link a few minutes ago. So. so 
you know, I hate to cut things short, but we're uh, getting close to time. And um, I don't know, Louisa, if you had any other quick things that you wanted to add before we move on. Uh, yes, just the, I don't know somebody helped me to click on this PowerPoint. So we're on the last page. We have two improved functionalities. If you look at the uh, add a form topic, now you can add to the forum level, not the individual topics. So this is a great problem for some of the faculty here. Uh, they have lots of topics under one forum. They have to add one by one. It's a lot of work. Now they can add to the forum level. Things got it a lot easier. So this is the feature I like. And also, uh, uh, OK, so Dave said, um, select two of the following five topics. Well, you can still only pick one at a time, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe mm -hmm. next round we can uh, pick multiple ones. Yeah. Uh, so the other one is the when you add a student page, uh, the settings for that student page improved, uh, especially the uh, peer uh, evaluation rubrics. Um, it goes through the grade book. Um, but I think there's still some work that can be done to, for example, modify the student page title. I don't want it to be called just a student page all the time. I maybe call it class project, something, right? So, it's, but it mm -hmm. only indicates as a student page. So that's the feature I'm thinking. Maybe next we can uh, talk to Chuck and maybe get it changed. Um, but still, uh, the peer review rubrics um, much more improved. I tested that that looks good. Uh, I just don't have a real rubrics to test that out. So if you guys have someone who's using student pages using a peer review rubrics, uh, please test it, test that it out. It's really good. Yeah, thank you. So uh, these are some uh, new features in there. And also I'm working on that uh, lessons new feature write up. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please let me know and how to make our um, promotional materials more consistent and also very specific and attract more people to use it. Thank you guys. Thank you, Louisa. That's, um that's really great. Love the, love the features. features. And Lucy Talents asks, is there a way to save peer evaluation rubrics so that you can access them from multiple pages within the same lesson? Also, can we edit the design of the rubric? So I don't know if you know the answer to that or not. Uh, I think you can add a uh, uh, your own rubrics in there. So if you see there, uh, the screen is a little bit small. Let me zoom in and maybe you can see a little bit better here. Okay, so you can see here sample peer evaluation. Uh, that's a sample one. You don't want to use that one. You want to use your own. So you click on this, create a new rubric, and then you got to a very simple interface. You can add your own rubrics in there. So next time, if you <clears throat> want to re uh, re create a new page with the same uh, rubric, there will be a button showing up there, and you pick your own rubric. Um, but I don't know if you can edit the design of the rubric. Um, it's a very simple interface. Uh, you can add a rubric items, but the design of it, like the style, color, I don't think you can do much about that. Yeah. But definitely try okay. that out. It's really good. Great. And I know we have a couple of other questions. Um, one from Karen about suggested wording. And I'm sure I'm going to, since we're running short on time, Karen, I'm going to suggest that you reach out to Louisa and share your ideas about that. Um, and I appreciate all the comments. <laughs> but we're going to have to move on. Sorry. Sorry. Louisa, I'm going to move to you. And uh, Move on to, um, I'm going to ask you guys to go back over to Etherpad. Sorry to cut this short, because um, I know there's a lot of energy around lessons, um, but it's
in the interest of time, we need to move on. And topics for our next meeting and any upcoming meetings, we're meeting again on May the 4th, which is the first Wednesday in May. And on the Etherpad is a list of topics um, for future meetings. And I need some input from you guys on anybody who wants to volunteer. Or do we want to just keep talking about lessons next time? Um, I don't know if Louisa is willing to get another discussion, but um, let's take a look and try to make some decisions, something to talk about, about next time. We still need to get, um, gosh, I can't remember who it was who was going to talk to us about importing official photos into profiles. And um, So Linda was originally uh, Lake Forest, but uh, I think they're not going to be able to do that right now. Okay. Somebody else, maybe, somebody else may be able to pick that up, though. So we'll just leave it on there for now. Okay. Sounds good. Um, we've got, I'm going to skip lessons, Sakai Podcasts and Polls, Kaltura, Documentation Group Update. Um, Neil, I think this is old. It says you're going to put a call out to the dev list for developers project. Projects I, I yeah, I did. Maybe I need to be a little more consistent on that. I mean, you know, maybe mention it at the couple more Sakai core team meetings. So um, yeah. I've, I'm sure I did do mention it and didn't get a lot of oh, response, yeah. which is not surprising. I think but you did. I don't know if we need yeah. to keep that on our list or not. But um, right. and the Aperio projects, you, I know you reached out to them once um, last year sometime, and we got a presentation out of that. Right. Well, now we have the Atlas Award winner, so I, we might want to think Ooh. about, you know, doing individual outreach to them after, maybe after the Open Imperial Conference and seeing if they'll jump in. Okay. Uh, it would be nice to have Zerti and Opencast people here. Um, Valencia just did a, a massive implication uh, implementation of OpenCast on campus. And I want to see how that impact their pedagogy and uh, student response. Yeah, I think we need to make them feel more empowered. I mean, clearly, this is still a very Sakai focused group, and we've reached out a couple times, but I think somehow we have to make those other communities like Xerti and OpenCast somehow feel empowered to, you know, run the meeting or present at the meeting or whatever. We need to think about that to make them feel like it's okay to do that. You know, I think they may still be thinking of this as a Sakai meeting, you know. Why don't we have a rule, like once every two months, there's a meeting where you're not really allowed to mention Sakai. And we get one of these, these other parties to come in. <laughs> because I think if anyone from those, from those communities was listening, they just get bored stiff with everyone talking about Sky all the time. So they're only going to come if we sort of say, right, this is not about Sky, this is about Zerti, or this is about Opencast. Or... So, so make it a sort of special event when we want them to come. Because they're not going to come if we're talking about Sky. Yeah, wonderful. I like the idea. Um, you know, the other day I just heard that somebody described Zerti and saying it's a, a, a European version of lessons. <laughs> so I don't know if that's true, but I definitely hope that Zerti will come over and show us, uh, show more people uh, what they have done and what Zerti can do uh, that the lessons cannot. So that'd be fun. So, I, you know, I appreciate all the ideas, but what we really need are people to commit to actually presenting on these topics. I mean, it's great to have topics, but without people actually stepping up and volunteering to present on any of them, um, all we have is a list of topics. <laughs> and we're at 11.01 and we still have no topic for May 4th. Anybody want to step up and uh, volunteer to present anything on the forum. Can I volunteer other people? 
sure. <laughs> uh, because I, I think I'm trying to think of what's more important here for the community. I think mm -hmm. when we have the uh, QA uh, efforts running down, you know, we got the uh, RC01 coming out soon. It's time to talk about documentation. Can we talk about documentation next week, uh, next meeting? I'm going to defer to Wilma. And I think she's leading that group. Uh, is she still on the call? She I don't know. Is a Wilma uh, here? She dropped off, I think. Um, so we'll reach out to Wilma and ask her if she can do that. Well, I, I don't mind talking about like, the features that I've added to Sakai 11. Um, it's just a bit of a, a, a mishmash of, of all sorts of different things we've added, but it will raise awareness of them all. I, I gave that talk at the virtual conference, though, so I'm kind of going to repeat it. I'm sorry, what was the topic? Um, just things Oxford have added to Sakai 11. Oh, okay. Well, that's so, another good one. So let me let me reach out to Wilma first, if that's okay with you, Adam, and then yeah, if... Yeah. If she's not willing, or maybe we'll have time for both. I don't know. No. Uh, but thank you. Um, thank you for volunteering. And um, so I will reach out to you both and um, check in about that. Yep. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. And I know we're over time. So we will have a meeting on May 4th. And it will either be talking about documentation or Oxford's new features in 11, or both, possibly. and. Um, Look forward to seeing you all then. Thank you, Tricia. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Louisa. Yes, thank you, Louisa. Wonderful presentation. Such a good topic and tool.